alo alo Hello, good afternoon. Hello, 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 good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, madam. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Your voice is audible, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. So, shall we start the session, sir? Yes. So, good afternoon to all the participants for the AACT sponsored two week online faculty development program. A warm welcome to today's speaker, Dr. Partha Pratim, sir. I would take the privilege to introduce Dr. Prath Partha Pratim Roy, sir. He is presently working as an associate professor in Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Indian Institute of Technology, Roti. He received his master's in 2006 and PhD in 2010 from Universitat Autonoma di Barcelona, Spain. He did postdoctoral stay in France and Canada from 2010 to 2013. Dr. Roy gathered industrial experience while working in TCS and Samsung. He was a part leader of computer vision research team in Samsung. He is the recipient of Best Student Paper awarded by International Conference on Document Analysis and Recognition 2009, Spain. He has published more than 250 research papers in various international journals, conference proceedings. He has co-organized several international conferences and workshops. He has been member of program committee of a number of international conferences and acted as a reviewer for many journals in the field. His research interests include pattern recognition, document image processing, biometrics, and human-computer interaction. He is presently serving as an associate editor of IED image processing, IED biometrics, IEICE transactions on information and systems, Springer Nature Computer Science. Sir, we are very happy to you, uh, have you as today's speaker, sir. Thank you so much. Now I Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sir. I request all the participants to post your queries in the chat box. Chat box is enabled. So please, please ask the sessions. Yeah, thank you, madam. Thank you for this uh, nice introduction. Okay, so I would like to thank uh, Professor uh, A. Ravi and also Professor uh, Kiran Mai for inviting me in this uh, event for sharing my knowledge with. Uh, all of you thank you everyone for attending this uh, lecture okay so i would like to uh, share my screen yes so hope uh, it is visible the screen Yes, sir. Screen is visible, sir. Okay, thank you very much, madam. Yes. Uh, 
Okay, so so I will be having two sessions with you. Okay, so first one I have planned that we will be discussing about this deep neural network and some of the applications where deep neural network have been used. Okay. I will not be able to show you all application because now deep learning is uh, being used everywhere. Okay, so I will show some of these interesting applications that uh, you, some of you might be aware of it. Okay, and some of the applications you might not see. Okay, so that I will uh, discuss today. And day after tomorrow, I will also take one session where I will be discussing some of the uh, fundamental theories of deep neural networks like um, the concepts like um, convolutions, uh, then regularizations, uh, and then dropout, okay, optimization, these kinds of uh, concepts along with the hands-on. Okay, so how, how actually you can uh, develop one deep neural uh, network architectures yourself and then apply on your applications okay so that's the my plan for this uh, two sessions okay so let us uh, start this uh, first um, session okay so uh, just to give you uh, my introductions as uh, madam already uh, explained introduced myself so you will be getting all the details of myself and my team experience in my website parimol.iitr.ac.in okay you see here in this uh, bottom okay left bottom you see for http colon parimol.iitr.ac.in this is my website so all the details of my projects, papers, these are all uh, detailed over there. Data sets, some of the uh, some data sets are also available online. Okay, so Parimal is a short form of my team: pattern recognition, image processing, and machine learning. You can contact me or drop me mails. Okay, at partho at the date cs dot This is my email ID. Partho at the red cs dot iitr dot ac dot in. Okay, and during my lecture, okay, so anytime you can interrupt, okay, you can ask me your doubts and we will try to uh, clarify. Okay, I'll try my best to clarify. Okay, so let us begin. So I'll start, okay, so with this uh, deep learning, uh, this uh, evolution. Okay, so with a few slides, how actually this uh, deep learning came into this at present, okay? So you see now everywhere you might have heard about this, uh, this deep learning, machine learning, data science. These are actually some of the buzzwords, okay? In industry uh, or academia, everyone is looking for projects, internship in these directions. So this artificial intelligence or what is the, it's the beginning okay, of this uh, deep learning, it came uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the real world around 1950s, okay, 1950s when uh, Professor Alan Turing, he asked, uh, he uh, asked uh, uh, that whether we can trick machine, okay? That machine will uh, be able to understand whether uh, the other side is human or machine, okay? So can we make machine as human being or not? Can machine think? Okay, how he has actually uh, proposed the experiment like there will be uh, one human interrogator, okay? So at the one side of the, the partition and on another side, there will be one human or it could be one AI system, okay? So this human interrogator, 
So he will be asking some questions and these questions will be answered either by human or by AI system. Then human interrogator has to understand whether it's a uh, AI or it's a human who is answering. Okay. So if uh, he fails to know that understand that whether it's a human or AI system, that means he, uh, this uh, AI has passed. Okay. So that means the machine has passed the test. That means the machine is behaving like computer. That actually started in 1950s. Okay. And then after that, this uh, 1955, then this artificial intelligence, this word uh, was coined by John McCarthy. Okay. And then uh, there were several small uh, robots or projects came. Okay. So like in 1961, there were uh, the robot industrial robot which actually replaced in general motor industry okay uh, this uh, of uh, this to replace this uh, human and then in 1964 there was one chatbot called Eliza. then in 1966 there was another uh, robot called shaky okay so like this uh, there was some uh, robots were coming into the industry and then after that there were several uh, projects came but these were not so successful okay so we call this era after 1966 as ai winter okay so it was not so successful because that time those uh, people were not able to uh, develop those uh, back propagation algorithms of uh, this neural network. This neural network was there, this perceptron algorithm was there, okay? But after that, this back propagation algorithm, it came in 1980s, okay? So uh, then from 1980s, then there are actually lots of um, uh, in the projects or uh, products came into this industry with this AI. Okay, and then from 1990s, you have the several uh, many different algorithms like uh, support vector machines, uh, random forest, I uh, mean, classifiers, classification algorithms came, okay, which actually uh, were better than this um, uh, multi layer perceptrons, okay, and then they were uh, doing uh, good performance uh, on the real world applications. And from 2010 onwards, this um, uh, new artificial neural network, multi-layer perceptron, which uh, was evolved as deep learning, okay, or convolution neural network, and that uh, overcome all the existing uh, machine learning algorithms like support vector machine random forest. And now this deep learning is the state of the art everywhere. Okay, so in a short you whatever we have discussed this actually this ai so it started in 1950s and then uh, 1980s you have this machine learning okay so machine learning because of this uh, back propagation algorithm and then 2010 onwards you have this deep learning okay so that's the rise of uh, deep learning at present so I will show you some of the applications. Okay, so today you um, see you see this what you find this um, autonomous driving vehicles. Okay, you might be uh, uh, you aware of these kinds of applications. Okay, so this is one of the very powerful and popular applications. Okay, so where the cars are equipped with this uh, sensors or cameras and there is no driver in cars okay so, and the objective is the car will move from one place to the destination without uh, help of any human support okay so with this uh, ai or machine can it move from one place to another place so that the road could be hill area urban place or rural place anywhere okay so you see this video here actually this is moving 
okay so in this uh, different challenging uh, atmosphere uh, circumstances you see this environment so it will it detects the road then it will also understand where is the traffic line or the road lane okay then also it will detail find out the pedestrians okay in front of it and then it will stop and then move like this okay so how actually it's, this is working so there are some cameras which capturing the videos okay so outside and that videos data or frames are analyzed okay using this computer vision uh, technologies okay so and then the, it finds uh, those um, objects like road text information then pedestrians car trees all these informations uh, it analyzes and then it works okay so you see it's moving into this uh, different uh, environment okay so it's not so easy okay so there are several sub problems like road detections road lane detections human uh, pedestrian detections okay, so several challenges are there okay so these are all solved using this your computer vision uh, technologies okay so this started in 2010 onwards uh, with this uh, uh, when in us there was a darpa uh, competition darpa is the, their defense uh, organization they launched this competitions of this autonomous driving vehicles in two years back actually i was there in us one conference so i was surprised to see that there were actually many stalls uh, which showcased their um, work of this autonomous driving vehicles okay you see this some of these vehicles i only uh, took these photos okay so these are all uh, autonomous driving vehicles so they are, these are all running without any drivers okay so like for example you have this top left uh, car that's a neuro okay so this is actually running in us for automatic pizza delivery so if someone of you deliver uh, orders the pizza so this will come without any driver and, uh, and then deliver the pizza okay so like that okay so there are many companies uh, like this which actually run uh, these kinds of uh, vehicles okay and uh, for their business and these are actually the many many companies were there and they are this are actually showcasing their work that how robust their cars are okay so now all these applications okay so if you want to make this robust so as you know that we had this machine that i was telling this we had this machine learning okay, algorithms like support vector machines random forest okay all those different classifiers like traditional machine learning classifiers what they used to do they used to uh, they used to fit the features into the classifiers and uh, give you the accuracy okay so for example if you if, if with this uh, traditional machine learning algorithm given an applications like uh, car detections or human detections what uh, we used to do given an image or video we used to okay uh, uh, feature extraction algorithms like uh, uh, texture features or uh, shape features okay or uh, object uh, detection or computer vision based features like shift 
scale invariant feature transform texture features like lbb or shape features like shape context or main error and similar many features were available which used to extract those features from the image or videos and then those features were fed into those classifiers like support vector machines random forest or multilayer perceptrons and then they used to get the uh, classification okay so like uh, what is the um, a classification accuracy of human in this image so like that so there were actually two blocks one block was for feature extraction and another block was for classifications for both there were many algorithms for feature extractions there are several algorithms for feature extracting the features and then for classification there are also many algorithms for uh feeding those features and getting the accuracy okay so but after uh, in 2000 onwards when this deep learning came so deep learning actually uh, made these two blocks okay combined these two blocks together and made a pipeline end to end okay so we call it end to end means you just give the image and then you get the results so we do not need to extract the features and then we need to we do not need to extract uh, feed these features separately okay so we will do both things together in a same block so everything will be done together that's we call it that's the thing we call it as a by end to end okay end to end architecture okay where we have this input image or video and then we want to get the accuracy in the other end okay so there will be no intermediate step for feature extraction and feature feed so what we used to do um, in this uh, if we were used to do this we extract the features and then we used to ex uh, feed this classifier uh, we used to feed these features into classifiers so now given this image we will extract the features and features will be uh, applied into this classifiers. So this will be done in a uh, deep neural fit, uh, network, okay? Or it, or we can say this as uh, uh, CNN or deep learning, okay, architectures, where this first part of this uh, pipeline is feature extraction, and second part is actually classification. But these are all done together. Feature extraction is done using convolution neural network okay so given this image you use some cnn okay convolution um, concept convolution max pooling all these concepts to extract those features and after that those features will be uh, used in this multi-layer perceptron for classifications okay so how actually it is different than your multi-layer uh, multi-neural network in mlp you have this input layer and you have this output layer input layer is of features okay in neural network or multi-layer perceptrons okay so you have this input layer is features whereas when we are using this deep neural network so in the input it will be of image and then we use some cnn we extract those features and this after these features you will have this input this a uh, multi-layer perceptron this block will be fit here at the end of this cnn okay this once you extract these features after that you will have these features will be uh, fed into this classifiers like mlp so this mlp is actually connected at the end of this cnn so that's the full pipeline features extraction and classification together Tomorrow, in the next sessions, I will be discussing some of the concepts of uh, CNN. Okay, so how what actually it does in this CNN or deep learning? Given an image, so you will have some convolutions, pooling, or uh, activation layers. It will extract those features. Okay, so this part it is actually extracting these features. So at the end, you will get these kinds of features. Okay, this is at the you see this uh, my row arrow. 
So here, these are the features. Once these features are there, so these features will be applied into a multi-layer perceptron. Okay, so you will have this fully connected layers. So this is a multi-layer perceptron. This will be fed, these features will be fed into a classifiers and this classifier will tell you that what is the accuracy, whether it's an image, is car or truck or everything, okay? So you have these two blocks which are connected one after another. First block is feature extraction and second block is classifications using multi-layer perceptrons, okay? So if I show you it with one image, so if you are given this image, a car, then you, we are using CNN, okay? So uh, convolutions, uh, max pooling, some other layers, okay, like this. So if we want to see, visualize these features, so if you see that initially, the initial level, the features will be very low level, like it is a, uh, edge features, okay? So or horizontal line features, extra. Uh, for example, this uh, uh, if uh, sharpening features, okay, this type of features, this we call it as low level features. And from that, we will use some another convolution layers. Okay, so there, those low level features will be converted to this next higher level features, like mid-level features, where we want to extract some higher level, like corner, circle, these kinds of features. Okay? And those mid-level features in the next step, using uh, this uh, convolution, will give you more higher level features, like uh, some more abstract, more object-oriented um, features, like whether it's a, door or whether it's a wheel okay a window these kinds of thing and later at the end those features will be connected to give you the uh, classification like car or truck whatever it is okay so you have this uh, convolution which extracts your features in different levels okay from low level to high level, and those high level features are finally used as uh, features in multilayer perceptron for classification. Okay, so this kinds of algorithm, these convolutions, okay, uh, whatever we have seen, these convolutions like um, uh, convolution relu pooling. Okay, this this is actually some uh, simple concepts and with this actually many people have designed with the different permutation combinations and tried to make the architecture more compact or more robust for some applications. For example, if we are talking about character recognitions, okay, so MNIST uh, data sets, okay, so it was, it's, I think it was, it started in 19, uh, 2000, Okay, in that time, okay, long back, that you have this image characters, okay, handwritten images, and that time those um, they applied this image, it's of uh, gray level, okay, so it's a single channel, so, and this image size is 28 by 28, so you have this image, one single image, and then they applied some convolution, and then with this convolution, you extract some low level features. After that, <coughs> you use some another convolution, you extract mid level features, then extract another convolution, find high level features, and then you use this multi-layer perceptrons here in this part, and then uh, get the accuracy uh, classification, okay? So whether this image is uh, five or six. So here in this part, actually you are extracting these features using convolutions. And after that, this last two parts is actually for classification using multilayer perceptrons. Okay, so yeah, you are having 10 class zero to nine. So that's why you will have uh, 10 uh, last, you will have only 
this uh, 10 categories okay so many architectures are available at present okay so you will have bgg16 google net resnet and many others okay which are nothing but your uh, uh, different permutation combinations of this convolution max pooling and activation functions okay bgg16 you see we will have more uh, total 16 layers with these convolutions max pooling all this and then you at the end you classify in google net also similar okay so you will have this image and then you uh, try to apply these convolutions in different layers and different uh, sometimes three cross three sometimes five cross five uh, uh, like this you extract the features and then you combine okay so these are different architectures and then resnet okay so more and more complicated and which actually gives better results in applications applications like you will have some data sets okay so publicly available data sets where this architecture this recent architecture show better results for example i show here one of the data set like CIFAR 10, okay, CIFAR 10 data sets. And the next sessions actually I'll be discussing this uh, data sets, how you can also apply, uh, develop one deep learning architectures and then you can get the results, okay. So in CIFAR 10 data sets, you have um, 10 classes, 10 categories of images like one category is of airplane, another category is of cars, birds, okay, cat, okay, different kinds of uh, categories, objects, okay. And then each category is of uh, total, you have 5,000 uh, image in training and 1,000 image for testing. Okay, so totally you have 10 class, that means 50,000 training data and 10,000 testing data. So we have actually, as I was saying, that there are different architectures available. So BGG16, if you if we test on this application, then we can get 92.64% accuracy. If we test with this ResNet, the accuracy will be 93. ResNet 15 will be 93.62. Okay, you see this accuracy is actually uh, improving when we have more uh, recent and um, powerful architecture, okay, of deep learning. So the now the accuracy is actually now more, more than 95, because now it's, I think it's 97 or 98. Okay, so this uh, performance, what I showed here is actually given an image, you have to say that this image contains what? It is an airplane, it's a air, um, bird, cat, or what? Now, there are actually also different object detection um, problems which could be solved using this uh, machine learning or deep learning. So, when I'm asking that, what is this? In, when I'm saying that image classification like cats or dog, that means whether this image containing cat or dog, or it's a, it contains for example, person or board for person plus for person if this image contains person or not. Okay. But when I want to say that, I want to know where this person actually there in this image. What are the pixels? Okay. Or in which location this object is there. So then it's actually called object detection or localization. Okay, so this is also an interesting problem in deep learning. It is uh, being solved. Okay, so not only this objects, what is the object, but where this object appears in this image. For example, in this image, you have several persons. Where is the persons? You find, you make a, a block 
ओके और रेक्टेंगुलर ब्लॉक यू रेक्टेंगुलर बॉक्स यू कैन ड्रॉ और यू कैन से दैट ओके वेयर इज द शिप ओके और बोट ओके सो लाइक दैट so that i was saying that you do not need uh, now actually it is more powerful the object detections so they do not only work for uh, finding only this box okay they can go at more lower level like pixel level okay so for example you given an image where which pixel belongs to car which pixel belongs to uh, road everything could be detected okay so for example here you see this there are different human okay so each human could be detected precisely okay so by this uh, object detection algorithms and not only that you, they can also tell you that what this object is doing okay so for example uh like understanding those behaviors of those objects so for example this person is playing balls okay and this person is actually eating donuts okay so something like this so object understanding is also being done with this recent deep learning uh applications so when we are talking about this kinds of problem so you, we will have this object detectors okay so i was talking about this these are all about classifications these algorithms and when we are talking about this object detectors that where your object is there okay so like in which block or what are the pixels of human or car in that object so there are many object detectors okay and these are all developed using this deep learning concepts okay this convolutions max pooling all this so you have several several algorithms like yolo ssd rcnn faster rcnn mask rcnn something like that, okay all this so you see that this actually show you that how they are Mm, uh, robust better okay so for example uh, ssd is better than yolo rcnn is better than ssd something like this okay so that's uh, that was a photo okay landscape skin okay so that was uh, published by this uh, 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 which actually taken by uh professor ross uh, garcik on mount uh, baker okay so these algorithms show that okay, how some of these algorithms are better than other algorithms so now you have this mass carson and who is better than other existing algorithms okay which will show you tell you that okay so what object which object is there in what part of the image and then when you know that these objects are there so later the question is how actually you can interpret okay so what they are doing this object whether they are eating or whether they are playing okay so these kinds of objects hmm. that is another concepts okay so in deep learning so whatever we have discussed these are actually all our convolutional neural network of deep learning cnn another concept is there that is called recurrent neural network which uses this uh, time series classifications using neural network okay or recurrent neural network so some of these algorithms are recurrent neural network long short term memory dlstm okay gru this kinds of algorithm which are there for time series classification for example given an image i want to interpret okay is that uh, what i want to say that what uh, what are the description of this image 
so i can can i say that okay in this image a cow is standing in the field this is a close up of a brown cow or there is a brown cow with long it's more detailed there are two trees and a cloud in the background of a field with a large cow in it okay so these are actually more detailed descriptions so adding captions to the image so this is actually very also very uh, recent uh, applications where deep learning is being used so given an image we just give an image and then machine will describe what this image contains it will not just say that these are the objects available in this image but it will also tell you okay like human okay it will convert those objects and it will make a sentence okay in the with a detailed description so for example now here we can say that a woman is throwing a frisbee in a park okay so this kinds of sentence could be generated using this cnn rnn concepts together okay cnn will extract the features of this objects like this object detectors okay and then rnn will describe will make a sentence with those objects and their understanding here for example a dog is standing on a hardwood floor this top sign is on a road with a mountain in the background okay so all the details detailed descriptions you may find in this image caption there are also some uh, applications where this time series data uh, classification is done for example uh, language translations okay so for example if i am saying speaking in english it could be translated into hindi or telugu or tamil or some other languages okay so for example here if someone is speaks in french using rnn or this kinds of technology it could be translated into english similarly english to hindi telugu any other or any other language these are also being done with this rnn or deep learning based technology where this deep learning is not of cnn but of rnn okay so deep when we call about deep learning means there will be different layers many layers will be there which actually learns the features from low level to high level okay so there will be many layers okay many layers of feature extractions okay so that's what we call it say deep neural network or deep learning this could be of cnn it could be using rnn cnn is mainly for extracting features from image or videos rnn is used for time series data like your it could be used in uh, language it could be used in for example if i want to go prediction of weather or prediction of stock market Okay, so these kinds of things where uh, you have this time series data. Okay, so for example, like if I want to say that what will be the temperature tomorrow, then I will be using last five days temperatures as input, and it will predict the tomorrow's temperature. So that's actually time series data. So there you will have this RNN and LSTM, these kinds of technology for predictions. okay so like this actually this kinds of technology are there for language translations it could be there for image captioning and many other many other applications i'll be showing today some of this more some of the applications okay so when we this two cnn and rnn could be combined together when we want to use extract some image descriptions or for example uh question answering okay so for example image descriptions like as i was saying that given an image i want to generate a caption but maybe the other way if i'm just asking a questions okay 
in the Google that, okay, send, give me the images where uh, one man is standing in front of a tree. And then from those sentence, it will extract those images. Okay, so that's the, when I am asking some um, image, a sentence, and then this will extract those image, relevant images, image retrieval, okay? Similarly, I can also ask uh, like uh, question answering. So give, I, I can give a question, I can give an image, and then I can ask what is sitting in the basket on a bicycle, okay? So these kinds of questions, if I ask, some user ask, and then can machine answer, okay, so that uh, are this uh, dogs or cats or whatever. Okay, is it possible or not? So it's when we ask some questions, so actually there are some tricks. Okay, so for example, in the sentence, you will have some clues. Okay, so like when I'm seeing the water sitting in the basket on a bicycle, that means you will have some bicycle, you have some basket. So you will find out those basket and then in the basket, what are the objects sitting? Okay, so like that, actually, you can find out those objects uh, available in that basket and it will give you the answers. Okay, so like this actually, question answering, sentence to image retrieval, image to sentence uh, retrievals. Okay, so like this, uh, these are all possible using this CNN RNN combinations. Okay, CNN RNN, both are very powerful and this could be combined together to give you very um, many uh, uh, many uh, this will give you very good results in this uh, latest uh, many applications okay so i will show you okay so some of the other applications as well so when you will be interested to work with this uh, image captioning okay so there are actually several data sets as you know the data sets are actually very useful when you want to go for this machine learning. So data sets like Flickr 8000, Flickr 30,000, MS Coco, these kinds of data sets are there which um, could be used for your image caption. So you can also generate your caption and you see that how your caption is relevant in that image so you can test it could be also video captioning like okay you have a video okay so like for example the man shooting a gun so maybe everything will not be detailed in a single frame okay so maybe in some frame you will have some a photo of gun or somewhere it is actually shooting okay so somewhere in this many in different frames you'll see some of the objects but at the end you want to describe from those um, frame blocks okay what is happening in this video okay so this image video captioning or video describe descriptions these are also possible using this uh, deep learning here you will have to extract these uh, features using cnn and then those features will be applied to some RNN for descriptions, okay? So now I'll show you some several applications, okay? So where, how actually you can use them, okay? So as you know, and I also told you that MNIST data set, okay, this character recognition, it is one of the old machine learning data set where people started working on uh, to, uh, to prove their classification algorithm that whether it is good or not. Okay, so you had only 10 plus problems. But when we write some text, okay, it's not a single character or digits. It is a full word, okay? So can machine understand the word fully, okay? So there actually it's not so easy because you have a word where these characters are 
connected one after another. So if you want to recognize like MNIST, you need to segment those characters one after another, okay? But for segmentation, if you want to segment this all these characters, you need to know what are the characters. For example, if you want to segment R and E precedent from in this sentence, in this word, you need to know what are the objects, characters available. So that means you need to recognize. So segmentation and recognition both are required at the same level. Okay, so that's why this kinds of word recognition is not easy. Okay, so word recognition is still challenging and you will see there are many research papers are there on handwriting recognitions. Okay, for example, there are data sets like IAM data sets, then um, uh, Arabic also cat uh, data sets. It's not of uh, only on word recognition. And when we go for sentence or paragraphs, like when I'm writing, I write in a page or paragraph. So if I just take a photo of the paragraph and give that paragraph to that uh, machine, can he understand what, what is the content of this paragraph or image? So it has to know that what are the different words and then these words need to be connected in a sentence. So there you will require a natural language processing okay, tool. So natural language processing is also done using RNN. Okay, so here you have the CNN RNN together. So CNN will extract the features and RNN will combine those features together and make and convert them in, uh, translate into an image and then finally it will be in a sentence okay so that's uh, for english okay and then when i want to say that okay we have in india we have more than 20 scripts available okay so we have hindi tamil telugu okay so many scripts are available which uh, need to be translated as well Okay, because we have many ancient manuscripts are there. And for example, if I'm from Bengal and if I travel to Andhra or Andhra Pradesh or Tamil Nadu, I will not be able to understand their language of Tamil or Telugu. So I require some software or some deep learning application which will convert this image to my to this to Bengali okay or Hindi which I can understand so there you have actually this um, we require this Indian script recognitions okay so you in this Indian scripts you have also similar problems like character isolated characters or digits recognition then if you have this uh, in a word okay several characters are connected and then make a form make a word so can machine understand this word that's a word understanding and then if you have a full paragraph of local language of tamil or telugu can machine translate from Telugu to English, okay? So that's how this complexity or challenges increases, okay? So from isolated characters to words and from words to paragraph. And not only that, sometimes you see that in, uh, in our letters, uh, para, you know, when we write something, Sometimes we write in our own regional language. Sometimes we also write in English. Okay. 
so it's a bilingual so when we have a con we we have a text content having english or another regional language so it's actually more complicated because you need to understand first whether the word is english or not first you have to understand whether this word is english and then you will be using english osia if it is tamil you will be using tamil osia if you it's uh, telugu you will be using telugu osia okay and then you will be converting from all these words to an, another language and make an nlp okay to make it uniform or to under to be understandable okay what is it over there okay so that's why in indian scripts actually it's not so easy so there are several challenges are there and then if and there are many opportunities are also available so if you are interested you can also work in this kinds of problem okay so we have a full paragraph of local regional language and can we convert them into uh this english or hindi or can we can machine understand whatever is the content so that's uh, here i show you this one video i took okay so for example uh, this video i took which is i was there in in uh, one place in this tamil nadu in temple okay so this video shows the scriptures okay in that temple as i am not from that place i do not understand okay this content so if i am having a system okay or app which if i am applying which i feed this video or image can it translate convert this image to my own language okay so that i can read it and understand what is the content okay though there are several softwares are available okay so like in bengali tamil kannada but these are not so sophisticated and these are all developed for simple isolated characters okay like this isolated characters there are no softwares for word level or sentence level in indian scripts okay so there are lots of opportunities for in this directions okay but if you want to if you are interested so i just show you this one uh, paper okay so that's interesting so how actually you can tackle this problem so for example given an image okay so this paper or this work was published in this pami e pami that is the ieee transactions on pattern analysis machine intelligence this top journal in machine learning so what they do uh, it's actually you have an image of sent uh, word or handwritten word so you extract some cnn based features okay like convolution neural network you extract some features like cnn max pooling all this and once you extract the features after that there will be this these features are there in time series uh, are feed into classifiers like time series data classifiers like rna so rn and like lstm blstm and then this will uh, make the conversion of these features translated in the text okay the state okay? So whatever is written over there so this cnn extracts the feature and rnn is using this features for transcription okay so that's how the cn and rnn both are combined together okay so like this you will have this image level uh, this uh, image captioning you have this video captioning everywhere you have this combined uh, architecture cn and rnn together which uh, the, uh, which actually work 
for uh, which work together. Okay. So here you see this CNN actually used in, uh, in CNN, you have this convolution with this different feature maps. And then finally we have these features. So why we are using RNN? Because this image, it may contain a small word like S or so, or it could be a big word okay, of many characters like statement or something, okay? So this image would be, could contain only single letter or could contain n number of letters. So that's why it's a time series data. So you do not have a constant or single image, single character image. If it's a single character image, you could apply CNN. As it is not constant, it's, it could vary the number of characters. So you need to apply time series classifiers like RNN to understand the number of characters in this image. So now there are also many other work, okay? So in, Bengal, in Indian scripts, we also published several work on Hindi, Bengali, word level recognitions. But in sentence level, uh, sentence level work, I didn't find any uh, in Indian scripts, okay? So there are so many opportunities for word level in Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, these kinds of scripts and sentence level. Okay. So one of the recent work, okay, so which is very interesting that machine is also writing like human. So for example, if I'm just giving some samples of my handwriting to machine, machine will understand the style of my handwriting. And then it will start generating the sentence with my handwriting style, okay? So you see here, this uh, done using this RNN, okay? So these are the some of the sentences which are generated by machine. Okay, so you see this actually look very realistic, but these are generated by machine using recurrent neural network. Similarly, I, will, I show you another applications like sign language, sign language understanding. In my lab, there are actually some students who worked in, with the sign language recognitions, understanding where, uh, are, as you know, this, in our society, there are many people who are actually speech and hearing impaired they have difficulty communicating with these common people because they use those gestures and those gestures are not known to the common people. So the idea is there should be some interface like computer interface, which will uh, understand those gestures and translate into English so that common people can understand. And then if common people say something, this will be translated into gestures. So in sign language, there are actually several signs like manual sign and non-manual sign. Manual sign means when people are using their fingers or hands for signing, okay? So they use their fingers and hands for gestures and then these are used for sign language. There are also another kinds of non-manual sign like face, um, uh, shoulder raising, head movements. These are also important along with your just face uh, finger gestures. Okay. So to have the compact meaning of the, to have the proper meaning of the gestures. These are called non-manual signal signs, okay? So in sign language also, there are also several complexities. So when people are working, 
there are data sets like a simple image okay so like in, you see in the top and the bottom left you have is some image and it's actually showing some finger gestures and this machine should translate what this image means when we move okay so it's uh, then it will be like uh video here okay so it's not a image but it is actually making some gestures okay so that you have to understand that people not do not use only a simple character or digit for gestures or for communicating their expression okay so they use different words or phrases for example here Where you see here, so this actually these are the different videos, and both videos are actually for pizza. Okay, so that's how mass even these are actually different uh, sign language by diff many pe different people and also there is a complexity that uh, in different countries the sign language is also different okay so we have this american sign language we have indian sign language okay japanese sign language and maybe in india also according according to these different regions the sign language also varies okay so for maybe north indian sign language it will be it could be different than south indian okay so there will be uh, difference like your language okay so in the sign language so that's how this complexity and then if i want to go further complex so like this person is actually making a full conversations so can machine translate this full gesture video okay to an e translated a translation okay this uh, english translation so that common people can understand okay so right now we have actually several data sets available but we do not have any any software which could translate those kinds of videos full videos for converting to those textual descriptions so in our lab we also show uh, we have also developed some of the works okay so for example this you see here this person is making some gestures and these gestures are on recognized and these are actually shown here okay and this is, what is the meaning of this gesture when he's asking when he's making this gesture the gesture is daily or uh, see whatever so we have developed some of the prototypes okay for the speech and hearing impaired people so there are also several other work okay for example like activity recognitions Okay, activity recognitions, uh, like for example, you see this is an action recognition, you can say. This is a small action, okay, a simple action. You need to say that what he is, he is doing, okay, in this action. It could be more complex when we have, when we have two persons together, okay, and they are doing some actions together. So we need to tell that what is the action is done by these people. It's not only by two people, it could be in a group. Okay, so what are the action done by these people in this video? So this is our all activity understanding. So you could also 
extend this kinds of uh, this action recognitions to some uh, real applications like for example we can also put some cameras in atm or banks to understand that if there is any fighting activities or if there is any abnormal activities can you understand from those cameras or videos whether there is any fighting okay so i show you another application this is actually very useful it's a video surveillance so these are the uh, scenarios common scenarios in like a uh, indoor okay indoor or outdoor environment like shopping mall bus stand railway stations airport you have many people moving here and there some of them could be standing some of them could be fighting okay some of them could be eating so can machine understand what is happening so for video surveillance what is the process that there are several cameras are there which record these kinds of video and in the monitor monitor room there are several uh, uh, people who actually monitors those videos and understand the activity of uh, of those videos okay if there is any suspicious activities this will be made an alarm okay so there will be an alarm so for any suspicious activities for example some people put some bag and leaves okay or there are some fighting incidents so there will be some alarm so can your software raise an alarm if such activities happen there are several videos uh, videos data sets are available so if you are interested you can also download and uh, work on this this kinds of problem okay these are actually very important applications of society okay yeah. so usually people work with this cameras with uh, this uh, rgb cameras sometimes rgb camera if you are using rgb cameras you need to extract those pedest uh, people separately that's also a, another task finding the human separately there are some uh, cameras available okay so which actually uh, does these things themselves okay so you do not need to worry so some of these cameras like microsoft kinect okay which which uh, if you mount on uh, in your indoor environment it will record those videos and then this will give you the descriptions of the human with the skeleton like for each person it will tell you that okay this is the head hands legs okay so like you will give, it will give you 20 junction points for each human okay so to make it actually to it simplifies and this give you the information okay so how is body is moving okay so like hands leg whether is moving or not from the from the stick diagrams it could be understandable so 
so if you have two or three persons so for each persons it will generate stick diagrams multiple stick diagrams and from their interactions of stick diagrams you can also understand what are the activities happening in that video so you do not need to work on this rgb videos always okay so there are several cameras which also uses which helps you converting this rgb to giving you the stick diagrams of each unit we have developed one system using this kinds of microsoft kinect for understanding the human behavior so what we have done so we have kept this in a camera a room and then there are some person okay so he could do any activities like one or many activities of uh, there were total 20 to 30 activities were there he could do any of these activities and then our software could tell that what active action he has done and what was the duration so for example from uh, first frame to 100 frame he was sitting and then after that from 100 frame to 150 he was talking over phone then he was eating something then he did some uh, walking like this okay so this continuous activities in a video could be decoded okay by this machine what action this person is doing okay whether he is sitting or he is standing whether he is drinking or eating activities and for what durations so this would be also useful in hospitals okay so for example the patients are there and monitoring those patients is actually very difficult because we have many um, patients and compared to that uh, that hospitals or nurses are limited so if we, we could use our software these kinds of softwares to understand the behavior of the patients, uh, sorry, the behavior of the patients. What is the durations he slept, or whether he took the medicine, he took some uh, exercise, he did some exercise or not? So it will generate the report. Later, this report could be read by the doctors, and then he could understand the activity. Okay. So you have now this different other uh, activities also could be um, uh, monitored. Like I said, this ATM machines, you have for them two person or three persons there and they are fighting among each other or they are behaving friendly. This kinds of behavior also uh, monitored using these kinds of camera. Okay, this is uh, why we are using this Microsoft Kinect is because you do not need to ex understand the human explicitly. Okay, Microsoft Kinect will tell you these are the skeletons or stick diagrams. If there are three persons, it will tell you three stick diagrams, three stick diagram figures. And from this interaction of these figures, you will understand that what is the activities they did in that video. It is fighting or dancing or what kind of activity. So here in our um, projects, we, we did, uh, I think, 30 different actions, okay, with multiple Human, two or three people they were doing together, and we need we need to understand the interactions of these people, whether they were playing or they were boxing 
they were fighting okay whatever what they were doing so these were done using this microsoft kinect so microsoft kinect generates the stick diagrams and from each stick diagrams we get this 20 joint points okay like that i said the spine this head shoulder legs all these points and then from those informations we train our classifiers like neural network or lstm models and then finally we combine this together uh, this um, act, uh, this individual models together to get the results So there are also several other applications people are using, okay, so of in uh, using deep learning. So as you know, this, uh, for example, you have the many old movies, which are in black and white or gray scale. And then machine can it convert those gray image or videos to color so that it will look realistic yeah? and it will be attractive too. So we have also several data sets, okay, like places 365 celebrity data sets where there are many images are in gray scale. And the objective is to do, uh, convert them into color. Okay, so there also you, we are using this uh, deep learning architectures Okay, so you have this uh, GAN model generator and discriminator. Okay, GAN model is uh, that's actually this data synthetic data generations. Okay, that's an evolution of deep learning model also where machine generates the image themselves. So I think you have, might have heard about in a, just a, or seen just two years back or one year back in Facebook or social media, we used to see that people used to place, uh, uh, put their photos, which look like 60 years or 70 years, okay, old age photos of the person. So these photos were generated by machine. So for example, I could generate my image when I will be uh, of 60 years or 65 years, how I will, will look like. So these kinds of images could be generated by deep learning models. So deep learning could also generate texture and many others. It texture like, for example, yeah, I'm showing you one small image and this model will generate a larger picture like it will generate for example if it is the 10 by 10 pixels okay so it will generate 20 by 20 or even 40 by 40 or 80 by 80 okay so with the similar texture so which will be which will never look like it, it is a machine gen a machine generator it will be looking like a realist real photo okay so where you see that this photo it's not a, like a enlarging the photos okay i'm not just increasing the size okay or just not um enlarging this 20 by 20 zooming up okay it's not like that it's like i'm just adding some texture component so that it looks um, bigger texture okay so these are texture synthesis then you have also video synthesis text text synthesis uh, like for example you there are some papers uh, okay like uh, research papers which are generated by machine okay so machine is only writing uh, generating a paper research paper okay so which is uh, this machine is trained with those recent uh, or these papers or uh, articles and this generate a, a new paper with abstract introductions, methods, all those stuff. So 
So you have actually many many uh, applications of deep learning. Okay, so some of these only I have picked up. So you see, this is one of the applications of image understanding that I was telling that when we have this autonomous driving vehicles or any photos we take and then machine will understand the detail information in this image. It could be an outdoor scene or it could be an indoor scene. Okay, where it will tell or it will describe each pixel information. So the, for example, you have these vehicles. So the pixels for each vehicle will be clearly mentioned. Okay, and then it will also tell what are the objects. You see another photo here, this uh, images, photos. These photos are generated by machines. These are not real photos. Okay, there are, these people are not, these people do not exist. Okay, these are generated by machine. Okay, by this deep learning or GAN, gener uh, generative and adverse, uh, this adversarial network. This GAN, using GAN, we actually could generate these kinds of images which do not exist. You see another video I show you. Yeah. Okay, so, so these sounds, these sounds are actually generated by machine. So what is happening? So we give an image in video, okay, without any sound. And the machine will generate the sounds and then it will add. And you see, you see this video with this audio, okay? And which look very realistic. So how machine actually understands that based on this image, what would be the sound nature okay so whether it will be looking whether it will uh, like wooden sound or it will be like uh, if i hit in a iron okay what kind of sounds it will generate so it will be learned by the machine and it will add okay so you see here
okay so as you understand here in this video this is a silent video and then they are understanding what is that object and then what kind of action is making and then these actions and objects are learned also from some other videos that what kind of no a sound it generates and those similar sounds actually that is placed here okay so, and then you can get the full video okay? so that's also synthetic sound uh, to this silent movies okay that i was telling about this uh, image colorizations adding sounds okay or similar kinds of synthesizing uh, applications okay so there are many 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 applications are there so there are also some applications there these are not in videos but these are also available uh, which actually uses deep learning so it's actually gaming okay so it's a uh, you know this um, machine learning is actually very powerful for um, learning the game patterns okay so you know you know this chess deep blue and recent many other softwares where uh, the grandmasters are lost against uh, this uh, softwares so where this uh the softwares actually learn using this reinforcement learning or deep reinforcement learning that's another deep learning based architectures okay so this is not cnn or rnn but it's also reinforcement learning okay so that learns after the end of the scenario whether it's winning or losing okay so so these are the many applications where this machines understand the environment by playing himself and improving themselves okay so whether he is winning or not and this is also some robots is actually drop and pick up by these robots okay so these are also done by reinforcement learning algorithms so given some parts and this robots could pick up or drop those um, coins or pieces from this conveyor belts very efficiently okay so now deep learning is being used everywhere so i stop here i think i have uh, shown several applications okay so you may see in some of my the work like handwriting recognition sign language action recognition video surveillance okay so in my website so we have published many papers in these directions so you can find them in this parimol website parimol.iitr.ac.in you can always drop me mails at arthur@cs.iitr.ac.in so thank you yes so we can i can take some questions if you have and the next day the idea will be we will be having uh this fundamentals concepts like convolutions max pooling these kinds of concepts along with some hands on where we we'll show this how deep learning you can develop a deep learning architectures yourself and apply to a data sets yes you have some comments we can take any questions anyone participants please post your questions on the chat box are first participants to please post your questions on the chat box
okay thank you very much yes so uh, if you have any comments you can always ask me or you can drop me mails okay so if you have asking for software tools say software tools you can ask for videos data sets data sets are available and then there are papers which actually work on those data sets and some of these papers will give their links of their code in that paper so you have to check those papers and then he, if you are looking for our work so some of this work are available okay so in our website body model website some data sets are also available you can look for this for video surveillance yet yeah, some of these data sets are available you can also look in this uci data sets kaggle competition data sets software tools for video surveillance yes yes yeah so software tools as of now there is you do not find any software ready made software okay so sometimes this authors the i am not audible yes i will give i i can i can give you this video data sets these video data sets are available Yes, I can give you this video data sets. So next next day, I can I can give you this video data sets. Okay. Sir. Yes. Yes, madam. Hello. hello yes gate analysis in which data set is suitable for video okay ls team is better to do processing yes the when we have this video or actions it could be sign language it could be action it could be gate anything when you want to extract the features from a image or single word then you have to use cnn and after that when you are going for a continuous domain like action gate okay or sign language then you have to use lstm always it could be lstm blstm this kinds of rnn architecture at present you have actually many recent architectures like stacked lstm okay the auto encoder many architectures are there which are variations of this rnn and these are more powerful than those rnn architecture so lstm is also one of this architecture you can always use but before that you have to extract features using this cnn and then once you extract the cnn features then you can apply rnn or lstm or auto encoder Yeah, ML DL. What will be the next technique? DL is the recent technique, and this is the latest. Okay, deep learning. 
Okay, so as I was saying, this AI started in 1950s, and then you have this machine AI actually it's a broad, a huge. And where you have this um, natural language processing, robotics, many things were there. Then you have this in machine learning, which started in 1980s with the evolution of this backpropagation algorithm, then people started using machine learning for many applications. And then from 2010 onwards, you have this deep learning, which is an evolution of multi-layer perceptrons. Now people are using deep learning everywhere. So deep learning is the latest technology and everywhere you have to use deep learning. Even you show that machine learning, this traditional machine learning is like support vector machines or random for these are better. Still, you have to show that how deep learning is not giving good results in the data set. You have to prove because now it is almost truth that deep learning is the best. So if you say that deep learning is not the good technology, then you have to actually prove. Yes, Parkinson's disease detection by gate analysis, it's possible. So when you have some gate, okay, understanding, you have videos, you extract the videos, features, Okay, like CNN features you extract, and then after that you apply LSTM or BLSTM or similar architectures for classifications. You have now two class, either Parkinson disease or not Parkinson disease from the gate. Okay, so there will be two class. So you should have a data set where some of the patients, some of the videos are of Parkinson, some of these videos are not Parkinson. So this machine will learn from those videos and it will train himself that what type of gait patients behave, okay, when they are having this Parkinson. When we are using, so when we say that we really require high computational resource for DL. Deep learning, actually it's, when we use deep learning, as you understand, it is having several layers, okay, for feature extraction. When we are using several layers of feature extraction, inside of this technology, there are several parameters. With increasing number of layers, your number of parameters will increase. So then you require more data for converging or understanding. Otherwise there will be underfitting or overfitting. So you will have, you have to run the model with a large data set. That's why it requires more time for competition. Okay, so deep learning needs more time because it's a heavy machine. It is having lots of parameters which need to be learned by using a large data set. If you are using small data set, it will be underfitting. You will not get good results in testing data. So that's why we require large data set. And when we reuse a large data set, it will take a lot of time. To avoid that, you if we are using CPU, it will take a lot of time. We need to use GPU, which will process okay, in parallel way and give you the results faster. 
okay so that's why data set or we can take our videos is it okay see when for any applications for any application when we are saying that please suggest data set or we can take our video for any applications first you have to check that whether the data sets are available or not if the data sets are available it means these these are public data sets so we have to show that the results on those available data sets whether your results are better than existing method if your application is not so common and you do not find any data set then you have to collect the data set yourself then you have to download you have to make videos yourself and then you have to run your algorithm on that data set when you will be developing a data set data set development is also a huge task as i was saying for deep learning it requires lot of data so you need lot of videos and for each video you need to annotate you need to write okay what is the object or what is the description of this video so that's it that will take lot of time okay so if you can afford then you can do it otherwise you have to take some publicly available data sets if these are available yes yes of course i am working on gate analysis can i communicate in future through mail to get some value of course sure that's why i have sent you shared my email id so you can always connect me for any of your problems related to research and we can work together okay so thank you very much i hope this session was useful and you get some ideas for your research thank you very much Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Okay. So as I said, this next session will be more on understanding the detail of this deep learning and how you can develop your system for any applications. Thank you very much. See you in the next session. Bye.